Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how I took this old Hi8 noisy footage and turned it from this into this. It's been upscaled, deinterlaced, and denoised. Now, I can do this inside of Resolve, and I'll show you how I do that inside the program itself, but actually, in the end, I used two totally different programs for this job. One is a program called Stacks Rip which is doing the deinterlacing and is completely free. And the other is an upscaling program called Topaz Video Enhance AI, which is about 200 pounds. And I've used that to make something which, okay, it doesn't look like high definition, but it does look considerably better than I ever thought I'd be, ever be able to make it. Stay with me through this tutorial and I go through all the steps that I used to get that done. I have actually done this tutorial as well using Grass Valley Edius and a lot of the information will be the same because I'll be using the same two programs to do the upscaling, etc. But obviously I'm looking at this from a Resolve point of view. Why have I done it twice? I do use both programs. There's some really nice things in Resolve for cleaning up stuff, but EDIUS is still my favourite editing program. So I did one video for EDIUS users and another one for Resolve users. So here I am inside DaVinci Resolve 17. As I make this the beta of version 18 has been released, but it's not final, so I'm still using 17, but I don't think anything on what I'm going to show you right now has changed between the two. So I'm inside Resolve 17, and here you can see on the timeline I've got some clips from a small scene. This original footage was filmed on Hi8, and then I backed it up onto DV many years ago. So these are DV AVI clips on a timeline inside of Resolve. When I first started using Resolve, you couldn't actually load DV AVIs into the program, and it has come on a long way since then. But these are linked to hour-long clips, which represent each tape of my original footage. Filmed in a very dark room. It was meant to be dark and dingy, that's part of the plot, but one of the problems you get with filming on high 8 in dark rooms is you can get a lot of noise. And looking at this, yes, this is very noisy. And, of course, I can scale this. So if I select it, and then zoom into it and move it around. Now, as a default, it makes it fit. And I don't like the fact that I do one scaling and then pile another scaling on top of it. So what I like to do is tell Resolve not to make this fit in any way, shape or form. You can do it per clip by coming to retiming and scaling, going to scaling and just saying crop. And that will just stick the picture in the middle doing nothing. You can set that as the default for the project. So if you open the project settings and you go to image scaling, you can say, yeah, anything that doesn't fit the timeline, crop it with no resizing. That's my default, actually, in Resolve, because I prefer to do that. It does mean more work, but it does mean a 4 by 3 thing doesn't get scaled to fit. Even if I used one of the other settings here, fit will make it fit with black bars. Fill will stretch it out so it fills the whole thing, which you'd think would be what I want, but unfortunately I've still got to chop off the flipping black bars that were there, was there in the high 8 stuff in the first place. And stretch will just make me fat and, uh, or fatter and fit that. So I don't want any of that. I just want to leave it shoved in the middle. And then I am going to grab the thing and scale it so that it fits. So I've got a noisy clip that fits. I want the same thing on the other, so let's just copy it, select them. Paste attributes, let's place the position and the scale, and there we are, I've now got the clips that fit. What I want to do is upscale and convert this video from its original DV into high definition progressive footage. Now there's the first thing, this is DV footage and it's got two fields on it, so it has to be deinterlaced. Old fashioned footage was made up of two fields, they split the picture into two halves, and every other line got updated every 50th of a second. And the two of them got combined to make a frame of an image. So it's kind of like 50 frames a second, but it's not 50 whole frames, it's 50 half frames. I'm going to Totally Progressive, where a whole frame gets updated every 25th of a second, which is how video is done these days. It's how computer screens work. It's how most TVs work now. So you really want to make progressive footage now, not interlaced, if you're going to stick it up onto YouTube or somewhere like that. So somehow I've got to convert it from interlaced to progressive. To give you an idea of the problem, if I tell Resolve this is progressive just by going to the clip attributes and changing it to progressive, and I go to a moving shot like this, there you can see the problem. All these lines. That's what happens if you don't deinterlace it properly. You're going to get this kind of nonsense. Now, as a default, Resolve will 
deinterlace it for you. If you put it onto a progressive timeline, it will automatically deinterlace it. So I'm going to just put this back to being what it thinks it is. And you see, that's what it's done automatically. It has deinterlaced it and it's done a pretty good job. You can change how it does this by going to the project settings by clicking on the little cog, going to image scaling and choosing the deinterlacing quality here. Now here you see I've got three options. I have the paid version, the studio version of Resolve, and I've got high and neural engine. The free version only does this, which is a bit fuzzier. Now you possibly can't see the difference on that particular shot because it's very fuzzy anyway, but let's do it using a different shot. So I'm just going to show you deinterlacing using this particular shot, which is not very interesting. Now, first of all, I've just taken the original DV clip and put it onto the timeline. Obviously, it doesn't fit, so I'm just going to select it, go to the inspector and zoom into it. And because it's high 8, I've got to move it over slightly because you get the black bars on the side, but they're not even. So I need to just move it over, move it up so we can have a look at this. And the reason I've chosen this shot is because we've got these diagonals going all the way down here from this box on its side. And you can see what happens if you get bad deinterlacing, which is all these horrible little jaggies here. Zoom into it so you can see it a bit better. Now, if I go into the settings, I'm on normal deinterlace quality at the moment, so I can pop it into high and you can see it does get quite considerably better. Or I could go right up to the neural engine which is a little bit better than high. And you can see again, that's got quite a lot better than it was in the standard way of doing stuff. In that I've got a lot nicer looking edges there. I can still do better though. And I can do better using a completely free program, which is called Stacks Rip, which is what I'm going to show you how to use right now. Now, my original clip here is an hour long, so I don't want to do the whole thing. I just want to make a bit that's the same as that section on the timeline. Now I'll go through exactly how I make up files to use in Stacksrip a little bit later in this video. Right now I'm going to show you the program itself. You can get Stacksrip by going to the internet and typing to Google and then downloading the file and unzipping it. Then you just run the program. The first time you use it, it'll pop up and say where do you want to save the preferences. I normally choose right next to the program itself. And then you get to this interface. This program can do an awful lot of stuff and I don't use half of what it can possibly do. I basically just use the deinterlacing side of things. What you've got here is you've got a source and a target. So obviously this is the thing you're changing and this is, decides where it's going to go. And the main thing you want to do is set some settings up. These are the filter settings, resizing and the final file. I come in here and I will tick field and then I'm going to go to this thing here and right click on it, get a field and choose one of these deinterlacing options. The one I'm going to use is QTGMC, which is widely known to be the best deinterlacer that you can get for free. It's already had that selected, but I actually like to go here, choose deinterlace that, choose it, and then it gives me the option of choosing some more settings. So I'll go medium. The slower it is, the better it's going to do, but I do find that if I go down to these very slow settings, I hardly notice any difference at all. So I'll go medium. And then I'm saying I'm using interlaced originals. That to me puts in a slightly better starting place than comes in the program. I still want to change this though, because as a default, what this program will do will take your 25 frames interlaced stuff and change it to 50p progressive footage. There is a difference in look between 25 frames a second and 50 frames a second. And video, because it's interlaced and doing 50 half pictures a second, it has got a different look to it to if you do 25p video. 25p stuff looks a bit more film-like because it's a very similar frame rate to film. Now, if you want to keep the original kind of movement and everything else that you've got in there, then you don't want to do what I'm about to do. I like to make 25p video. The thing I'm doing at the moment is a drama and... I think it looks nicer being 25p than being 50p. So I like to deinterlace it to 25p. And to do that, I've got to stick something else in here. So I just go back to this place where it says field and I double click on it and it opens up this code editor box. Changing of the settings, you've actually got to type stuff in here and you have to know what to type to be able to put things in here. Now I happen to know what I need to do to make it come out at 25 frames a second. I just go to the end Stick in a comma and a space, and then put in FPS div isor equals two. So it's going to kind of make 50 frames a second and then chop it down to 25. 
but I always do that because I like 25 frames a second. And you might say, does it look any different? Well, apart from the movement, and I say 50p looks slightly different to 25p, I think the quality is exactly the same. You might not want to do that. If you're just doing home footage or something, you might want to keep the original kind of movement of it. Do a couple and see what you prefer, but I like to do that. Now, I'm not going to do the rest. I can denoise it, and there's all sorts of denoises that you can get to. You can resize it, and there's all sorts of resizing settings you can get to, including my favourite Lanxos. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to resize it afterwards. The next thing I do is I come over to here. Now, DV footage is not square pixels. You know, they're all slightly rectangular pixels. And I like to square pixel it at the same time as deinterlacing it. And the way to do that is to go to PAR, which is the target pixel aspect ratio, click on it and choose PAL 133. That's now going to take it and square pixel it, which just makes life a bit better later on. But I'm not going to resize it. So the fact it's got 1920, 1080 here doesn't really matter because I haven't ticked resize. But this is going to have an effect. The next thing I want to do is decide what kind of file I want to make. Now I'm going to make a file which I'm then going to edit, so I don't want to lose a lot of quality. So I don't want to use something like X265, which makes H265, or H264. These are the kind of formats you use to give somebody a final video. But if you're going to remake it, you want to keep it a bit less compressed. And the best option that I've got in here is to make a ProRes MOV file. There's lots and lots of different options, but out of all the ones, that's the one I've chosen. Now, to do that, first of all, you have to click on X265, go down to FFmpeg, and choose ProRes. Now, that's going to make a ProRes file. I want to make it in a MOV file, and it's making an MKV. So you click on MKV, FFmpeg, MOV. So now it's going to deinterlace it, square it up, and make a MOV file. And those are the only settings I put in here. Like I said, there's a lot more you can do with it. Having done that, I haven't actually loaded a clip yet. Having done that, I'm going to save that as a project template because that means I don't have to set this stuff up every time I come into it. So I'm going to go to File, Save as Project Template, and call it Just Deinterlace. You might also notice there, there's a little tick box saying Load Template on Startup. If you tick that, then every time you load Stackstrip, it'll have these settings in it. So I also like to tick that. Now I want to load my clip. So I'm just going to go up to the source here, right click, open, single file, find my clip. There's a little bit of jiggery pokery to look at it. And then the Stackstrip program comes back to itself. And then I'm going to add a job and encode it. Normally what I do is I add lots of clips. And I'll go through that in a second when I show you how I save the clips out of result. And the reason I'm doing it now is I am changing the originals before I do any major work on them. So I'll do the edit with my original AVI files. Then I'll make versions of them which are upscaled. Then I'll start grading and doing effects on them. And I like to work that way. I could just take my final video and whap it in here and deinterlace the whole thing. But I get better results by doing each clip one at a time. I'm also going to be keeping its squareness, and I'm going to widescreen it later on. But anyway, I'm ready to go. Add job, start, and then off it goes. And it isn't the fastest program in the world. It will take me a little bit of time to go through this and actually convert it into a usable clip. It's a very small clip, so it won't take too long. But if I've got quite a long clip, yeah, you could be working a few hours. And I've got a pretty good computer here. This is an 11th generation Intel processor. But there we are. It's done. Now I'm going to come back to Resolve and grab that clip and bring it in. So there we are. I've now got that clip which has been totally deinterlaced. I know there's not much movement going on, but I specifically wanted to show off what happens with diagonals here. That's why I use this clip. Bung it onto the timeline. Now so far all I've done is just deinterlace it. So if I take the clip and put it straight onto the timeline, it is still a square clip and it still isn't the same size as the original footage. So what I'm going to do is now take that and scale it to match this. The simplest thing is to take that one, copy it, go to this and paste attributes and paste the position and the scale. So now it's exactly the same size as the other one. And if you look really closely at that, that's the one I've just done in stack strip. That's the one that's done in resolve. And you can see it is a better result. And I have to say the resolve one is actually pretty good. The stacks one is better, just better, a bit sharper and a bit nicer. Now these are both being scaled by Resolve, and Resolve can do pretty good scaling. 
If I open up the inspector and choose a particular clip, you can come down to retime and scaling here and go to resizing filter and you've got lots of different options. My favorite is Lanxos, which I think does a bit of a sharper result than just the standard one. And if you like that in particular, you can go into the project settings, image scaling, and set Lanxos as the default by going custom and method here. So now everything is being scaled by a Lanxos inside of Resolve but I can still do better. Now what I want to do is to show you how I would scale this using another program which you have to pay for, which is called Topaz Video Enhance.